Hey folks, welcome to today's tutorial. We're looking at right angle trigonometry um, as a bit of an introduction to the non right angle trigonometry. Um, so, to start off with, I'm just going to look at our old rule of Sokotoa, which helps us finding unknown sides and, of course, unknown angles. Um, so, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan opposite over adjacent. Pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, so the first uh, step we always take, we locate the angle given, in this case it's 35 degrees, we then label the two sides um, with regards to that angle. So the x in this case is the opposite side, the 20 is the adjacent side. There is no point labeling the other side because I don't need to use it for this question. So which rule uses adjacent and opposite? That's going to be our tan rule. So tan 35 degrees equals our opposite over our adjacent value. That's pretty much your first mark usually. The next step is to get x by itself. We do that by getting rid of the divide by 20. We know that's by times in by 20. So if we do that, we get 20, um, x equals 14.0015 dot dot dot. Now the question has specified for three decimal places, so 14.00, that's my third decimal place, so it be, remains units on there, so I'm going to just chuck units and that's as easy as that. Next question, okay, you might want to pause this and have a crack at it. So once again, we've got our 43 degrees, we're going to label the two sides, this time we've got the hypotenuse side and our adjacent side, we don't need the opposite, so which rule uses adjacent and hypotenuse, well that would be our cos rule. So cos 43 degrees equals our adjacent, which is 15, over our hypotenuse, which is x. Now you might remember what happens when x is on the bottom, or x is the denominator. Um, we can simply just swap the cos 43 and the x around. So what I'm actually doing there, I'm going to come up with x is equal to 15 over cos 43. Now, can you remember why we do that? You don't really need to know it, but the reason why, if I want to get rid of divided by x, we're going to do times by x. I've now got x times cos 43 um, equals 15. Now, I want to get rid of the times cos 43 by dividing it by cos 43 which is exactly the same as what we've got there. Um, once we've got that, bang it into your calculator, we come up with uh, 20.50991 dot dot dot. Go back to the question, it says two decimal places, so x equals 20.51, and we're going to put units on the end of that one. Once again, nothing too challenging. So the third question, looking at finding an angle. Same thing, we locate our angle, which is a theta. We, in this case, got the opposite side, and we've got our hypotenuse side. We don't need the adjacent side. So again, I come back to my rules. That's going to be SOH, so, so sine theta, or sine, or is theta this time, theta equals our opposite over our, uh, so our hypotenuse side, which is 22. Now, can you remember what we do, what we press when we want to find the unknown angle? An angle. Finding an angle, we want to do shift sine because that gives me that sine to the negative 1, which kind of means divided by sine. So what I'm actually going to be writing down here for my working out is theta equals sine negative 1 13 over 22, oops, my apologies, and then let me just rewrite that so it's a bit nicer, um, 13 over 22, chuck that into my calculator and we come up with the answer in this case of 36 point two two one five dot 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 now the question then says to the nearest minute so we need to make sure we press that bubble button okay pressing the bubble button it puts it in degrees and minutes and it comes up with 36 degrees 13 minutes and 17.57 seconds. Now, this is what tells me what happens to it. If it's 30 and above, this will go to 14 degrees. If it's less than 30 degrees, it remains the same. Therefore, the answer is 36 degrees 
and 13 minutes. Okay, I've got my answer. Okay, brings us to our last question. Okay, a bit more of an applied question for this one. So a plane flying, uh, a plane is flying at an altitude of 880 meters. So altitude is height, so we've got that, uh, that height there. I'll put that in red. It says, Kayla is standing on the ground and she observes the angle of elevation to the plane as 67 degrees and 40 minutes, which means that first triangle, I guess, that we've got here to the first sort of part of the plane, like that part there, that angle inside here is going to be that 67 degrees and 40 minutes. The plane then flies a certain distance after 25 seconds. So that's 25 seconds later. Well, actually, I don't need to write 25 seconds later, do I? Well, I'm going to write there, it flies a certain distance. Let's call that distance x. Um, and it's asking us, okay, and that, sorry, it has a, uh, the angle of elevation changes to 24 degrees and 30, which basically means this angle here is the 24 degrees and 30 minutes. Okay, so it's asking us how far the plane is flying that time. So it's looking for x. So in terms of this, we don't know any non-right angle trig yet. Well, you probably do know it, but we're not using it. We're going to use right angle trig. This is my right angle triangle here. So I guess we kind of might use this one, and we've actually got a bigger one, as you can see there. So I kind of want to know what this angle is in here. Because if I know what that angle there is, I can find out what that distance there is going to be. And then if I find out what the angle is inside here for the whole lot, I can then find out what the whole length is going to be. By doing that, I can then subtract the two sides to get x. So hopefully you understand that. So first of all, how do we find um, this little theta inside the small triangle? Okay, um, well, let's have a look at what we've got. We've currently got this part here as being that 67 degrees and 40 minutes. This is the 24 degrees and 30. So if I subtract those two amounts, what that's actually going to find us is that angle inside here, which is probably going to be useful to us um, at some junction. So let's do that. We're going to do 67 degrees and 40 minutes. We're going to take away 24 degrees and 30 minutes. And we're going to come up with, in that particular case, so I'm just typing into my trusty calculator. Make sure when you're putting your degrees in, you always put it after the minutes as well. We come up with 43 degrees and 10 seconds. So um, 43 degrees and, and 10 minutes. So that's what that is just inside that little green part. Now, I want to find out what the blue theta is as well. That's quite important. Now, I know that the whole thing here is at 67 degrees and 40. So if I'm trying to find theta inside there, we know that we can subtract that from 90 degrees. So I'm going to do 90 degrees take away 67 degrees and 40 minutes. Okay, I'm going to put that in my calculator now. 67 degrees and 40 minutes. And then that comes up with 22 degrees and 20 minutes. Probably didn't need to do that, did I? Okay, so we know those two amounts. So how's it going to help me? Well, originally I said if I can find the length of the big triangle there, I guess that sort of big one that, that we can see going through there, and we now know the angle in here in that whole bit will be the two combined parts, the 22, 20, and the 43, 10, because it's both of those angles add together. Okay, so if I just chuck those together, 43 and 10. Okay, I can say um, that that's going to be 65 degrees and 30 minutes. We know that's 880 and that's x. So let's do that. So we've got the side of um, opposite and adjacent, which is 10. So we can do 10, 65 degrees and 30 minutes equals our opposite over our adjacent. I'm going to move the 880 over by timesing it. x equals, so I'm going to put in here um, 
880 times 10 of my angle and we get 1930.9837 now if I want to find out what the distance of this case is of y is going to be that's this little part here okay we now know that the angle inside there is 22 we've got our um, in terms of our theta we've got our opposite we've got our adjacent so it's 10 again so we've got 10 22 degrees and 20 minutes is equal to our opposite over our adjacent again we're going to move the 880 across there to get y equals and then I'm just going to put in here um, 880 times 10 22 degrees and 20 minutes that gives me 361.51 and then my final part is going to subtract those two just so I'm left with what x is there therefore x equals I'm going to do 1930.987 so 37 subtract the answer and I'm going to get now it says the nearest meter so we get 1569 meters okay so that's pretty complicated to be honest with you if you know how to use your, your sign rule and that sort of stuff that might be a lot quicker the last part says what is the speed to the nearest kilometer per hour well it's traveling one five six nine meters in or was it 25 seconds so we want to put that into what one second is going to be so let's divide one five six nine by 25 that gives me what it is for one second so one five six nine divided by 25 which is 62.76 per second now I'm going to times it by 60 seconds times it by six um, by 60 minutes I now get two two five nine three six meters per hour and I simply need to divide that by a thousand to put it into uh, kilometers to give me a speed of 225.9 I says the nearest kilometer isn't it so or 936 so 226 kilometers per hour and that's pretty tough there now before you're freaking out that was one of the last question in the challenge questions that one's pretty tough but as I said, as we move on and we learn our non white angle trigonometry, um, there's probably going to be some easier ways for us to do that sort of question. Um, and look, that's only one particular way too. There's probably other ways I could have done that with alternate angles as well, which probably would have made some of that just a slightly bit easier. In particular, you could have looked at the alternate angles in here. So you could use that angle instead. There's lots of different ways. I'm not going to bother redoing things and try to find the shorter ways. Um, that worked, and it was I said, a bit long-winded, but certainly I'm hoping you, you're remembering your Sokotoa so then we can go into our um, non-right angle trig, and then we can start getting a little bit, uh, a bit more in detail. Remember, your Sokotoa, along with Pythagoras, are the first two things you look for. But of course, if it doesn't have a right angle um, in the triangle, then you need to move on to the new things that we're going to be doing next lesson. Have an awesome day, guys, and I uh, hope that wasn't too uh, much on your brain. Have a great one.